In this question, we have a sample of gas in a flexible container that initially occupies a volume of 19.9 litres. Then the volume of the container decreases to a volume of 15.4 litres and the pressure of the gas is 1.98 atm. We're told that the temperature and number of moles of the gas remain constant. So we've been given the initial volume, I'm going to call that V1, to show volume at the beginning. We're also given the final volume, we're told the volume decreased to 15.4 litres. I'm going to label that V2 to show volume at the end. And we're told the pressure at the end is 1.98 atm, so I'm going to label that P2. So let's fill out our work table here. We don't know the initial pressure. Our initial volume was 19.9 litres. Our final volume is 15.4 litres and our final pressure is 1.98 atm. Okay, and we are trying to find the initial pressure of the gas. So we're trying to find P1. Okay, so let's go find an equation that works for changing pressure and volume with constant temperature and number of moles. This equation here has pressure and volume in it. That's Boyle's law, and that works for constant temperature and amount, so number of moles. So that equation is going to work for us here. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. So let's write that down. P1 multiplied by V1 equals P2 multiplied by V2. So based on this equation, our pressure and volume multiplied together at the beginning should be equal to the pressure and volume multiplied together at the end. So pressure and volume multiplied together is going to stay constant throughout this process. So based on that, we can make a prediction that if our pressure increases, our volume is going to have to decrease so that the multiplied together pressure and volume stays the same. Similarly, if our pressure decreases, our volume is going to have to increase again so that the pressure and volume multiplied together can stay the same. So in this question, our volume between the beginning and the end decreased. So that means we're going to predict that our pressure should increase between the beginning and the end. That means we're expecting our initial pressure to be less than 1.98 atm. Let's do the calculation and then we can use that sense check to make sure we got the right answer. So we're looking for P1. So let's rearrange our equation to find P1 on its own. Right now P1 is multiplied by V1. So I'm going to divide by V1 on both sides to get rid of the V1. That leaves me with P1 equals P2 multiplied by V2 divided by V1. We can put our numbers in. P2, our final pressure was 1.98. V2, our final volume was 15.4. And V1, our initial volume was 19.9. So if we put that into our calculator, that's going to get us a initial pressure of 1.53 atm. So just as we predicted, that initial pressure is less than our final pressure. Let's fill that in to our answer box now. We've got 1.53 atm. So we can see our pressure increased between the beginning and the end and the volume decreased. So that makes sense based on our equation. And it also makes sense logically because if we've got a constant temperature, a constant number of moles, if we have a bigger volume, that means our gas is going to be more spread out. So our pressure is going to be less. Whereas if we have a smaller volume, our gas is going to be much closer together. All the particles will be closer together, so our pressure is going to be higher. So the initial pressure of the gas that we found was 1.53 atm. Again, it's important to remember this equation only works when we have constant temperature and constant number of moles.